Okay, this is week one of hashtag ask yag. I'm just picking the token now. Where are you from? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the token is number ten. Wait, uh, I need to swipe. Oh, no. <laughs> number so, ten. Where's the stick operation going? Number ten. Just for full disclosure, as you can see, we have yeah. a six and a nine and eight and eleven. Like the bingo calling, like number ten. Actually, for the number ten. Yeah. Do we have to say bingo or do we? No, we agree. <laughs> when we agree, bingo. <laughs> okay, so Darren's got the question. Nearly. Oh, 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 I need your laptop. Oh me. Oh, so hold on. Hard. He's got it. He got this. Just Wait, take it away. I'll see you then. He goes. I'm nervous about which question. Basically, I'm, I'm nervous just about just sliding along. Oh, to get number 10. Do watch it. Because it's random, randomised. Uh, not in the okay. order. I can't remember mine, so I can get it. Is that number 10? Number 10. Number 10. <laughs> right, here we go. Okay, here we go. Number 10. Uh, right, so this is quite a long one, actually. Mm. Um, okay. If there are different churches, Preaching incorrect messages or translating the word wrongly, why does it continue to happen and does God have control of us? Oh, and then, whoa. Oh, deep. This might be the first time someone has encountered the Christian faith and they're getting fed misinterpreted messages and directed down the wrong path. Reference Parable of the Sower, Matthew 13. Wow, this is really deep. Yeah. I know exactly who it is as well. <laughs> who is it? I don't know, should I, but are my buddies here now? No, 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 don't say it, don't say okay. it. Is that the... That's question 10. Whoa. Okay. So I guess the adjudicators <laughs> have to... So, adjudica adjudicators, is that a fair question to tackle tonight? <laughs> I mean, I personally think that everybody might have a different view on it. Jenny. Which is good. That's okay. Is that good? Oh, That's cool. okay. We don't have to land on <laughs> a clear character. Can you read the question again? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's quite complicated. So it's not really that. Is it more like a statement? It's a statement. If well, yeah, it's a statement. I can see like the yeah. If this there are different true. churches preaching incorrect messages or translating the word wrongly, why does it continue to happen and does God have control of us? This might be the first time someone has encountered the Christian faith and they're getting fed misinterpreted messages and directed down the wrong path. Reference Parable of the Sower, Matthew 13. It's a great question. It's a very good question. It's a very deep question. So this is on the spectrum of your... You said that there was a spectrum of deep to... Trivial. I don't know, this is probably... This is as deep as it gets. I think there's a deeper one out there. Deep. <laughs> as he calls us deeper <laughs> still. There's a top seed still in there. So if, if I was to summarise this question, it is, if there is a church is preaching the wrong or not preaching the truth, I presume, how come that church continues to preach that um, and God doesn't, does God not intervene to stop it? And the person's concern is because people may not know any better and they may sit under that and they may believe it and they may act on it and in essence miss out on the truth. So, do we go ahead? Number twos, do we go ahead? It's got to be quick. Wait, and you can't chicken out. You can't say, Wait, "Oh, that's too hard." Do you want to do so we're question? not going to yeah, do I'll, it. Yeah, I'm on hands and questions. Isla's are you so in? Anna, are, are you in? She's in. Yes, yes Anna. Yes. Am I? Yes. 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 No, you lose three. I don't like Fiona. You too as well. Come on, girls. Come on, we can do this. We're in. We can answer this, can't we? Okay. No, you don't need to answer it. Well, well, it's a question. So can any can 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 people relate to the question in the first instance? Yeah, well, like yes, I think so. Or is there anything yeah. about the question that we don't quite get in the first place? Let's start there, rather than answering the wrong question. No, I think I think I think maybe somehow we can all relate to it. Maybe if we've like gone to a church where we're like um, don't exactly agree what they're saying, but like. I certainly know how I've dealt with that. Mm -hmm. So I can maybe answer that question so just in that's my an Yeah, that's an interesting... But so we'll come to you, we'll come to you okay. to open up okay. the uh, um, discussion. But do, do we get the question? Mm -hmm. 
Did we, not, we discussed it last well, kinda of discussed it last week. Um I think Rebecca came up with when she met someone. Oh yeah. From yeah. some aisle or something. Yeah, yeah. And oh, right, I that. she's <coughs> it was like well, Rebecca was speaking to her and I was like, Oh, that's completely rubbish. But I can't really remember what it was about, but she didn't realise that you could do something else, like go completely different and follow God completely different. Yeah, I went that the lady didn't believe. Did she not? Um, it was about women and, yeah, women. and the church and things like that, and the women didn't believe she could speak in church or something like that. Something like that, anyway. Yeah, you Because then you took it to them. So you we were reading the message and it was to do with he was it John that wrote the or Paul and it was about yeah, 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 for yeah, that indeed. time yeah, that, like, yeah, yeah we covered a general that, uh, sort of thing mm-hmm. it was just mm-hmm. written maybe just for that specific yeah. uh, situation <clears throat> so yeah what do we have to say because this was never a, a sort of a, we don't want to turn it into a teaching, but we need to uh, try and um, land ourselves somewhere on what God is saying about that I particular question. If you question what someone's saying, then the only real, well, the only, not the real, um, the correct or true word is in the Bible. So mm-hmm. go back to the Bible. Mm-hmm. I think. Almost. So what did you do then? Well, I think because like, if I've been been to like um, like America I think in minds and if we've been to a church um, and maybe they've said a few things and I'm like oh, I'm not 100% sure but I know the truth and um, even if I if I was a non-Christian and I was going to a church and you know the their teaching wasn't right or something like that I'm sure that God would show um, himself in a way that they would understand and um, I don't know, I feel like God would maybe show up in that situation. I don't think he would just leave it for them to misunderstand what they're being taught, if that makes sense. Like, I'm sure that God would go into the situation and show him through the truth um, so they wouldn't just be left Mm -hmm. with this, you know, knowledge that's maybe a bit untrue because God is truth. So hopefully that will just seek through the situation. But I think because I am Christian and I have heard some things, I think, again, going back to the Bible, realising what's been spoken um, and what I feel that God's told me personally, um, the truth. So I think it's just having that faith of knowing what the truth is and just realising, you know, what's in the Bible is truth. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know if that makes sense, but guys. I think, <laughs> I think it does. It does I think the, the the end result is always with the Bible. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes you listen to something and you think, well, I don't quite agree with that. It's possible that you don't agree with it because you don't like it. Mm. It's possible that you don't agree with it because you don't know anything about it. It's possible you don't agree with it because you're scared of it. It's possible you don't agree with it for whatever reason but it's also very possible as you were saying uh, that it is because in your journey of studying the Bible God has been speaking to you and laying foundational truths in your heart that calibrate um, truths so when you hear things there is an internal um, um, meter that sort of gauges what you're hearing and sometimes it can be wrong so sometimes we say, oh, I don't agree with that, um, and it's not correct. But many times, uh, if we are rooted in the Word of God, then, yeah, we, we're on solid ground. Um, it's always good, if you're not sure, to ask God to show you what, first of the, of, of, of the Bible, uh, that truth sits in in order to gauge. Because sometimes we make wrong decisions or something, but oftentimes... I think the thing I will say is whenever you hear something you think, whoa, you need to check it out. Mm, yeah. You need to check it out. It may be true or it may not be true, yeah. but you need to check it out. Once it sort of not startles you, but something quite new or something quite strange or something very different or slightly different. Because remember when we were 
I think earlier in the year we, we talked about what Paul said. He says, you've moved on to another gospel. And his, what he was suggesting was, even if you move veer off by one degree from the true gospel, it's not a gospel at all. So it, it was a very, it's a very binary thing, the gospel. It's either the gospel, once you adulterate it, it's not a gospel. It does all kinds of other things, but it doesn't do exactly what uh, the gospel states. I think. Yeah, I think sometimes like it can be easy to quickly something crawling along the ground. Um, it can be easy to like react to something someone said or didn't say or whatever when um, they may have said it like not in the best way. I know at times I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, true, true. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I agree with that. And then, but then knowing the heart behind the person and knowing how they live their lives, being like, oh, I actually think this is what they meant. I think that's why it's really important to get to know people Especially. as people and have relationship. And whereas it's harder when you visit a church because you don't know the people. So you're like, I think it's so easy to jump to conclusions. Like I know for myself, it's very easy to go, mm, oh, I'm not sure about that. But like, I don't know that person and I don't know. Whereas sometimes I'm like, if Ian says something, I'm like, oh, I know he said it. That's not what he meant. You know, you can kind of go, oh, he maybe could have worded it slightly different or whatever. And I know for myself, I sometimes say stuff and I'm like, oh, that's not what I meant. I hope people who know me know that that's not what I meant. So um, I guess it's a spectrum of like spe people speaking um, like a misunderstanding. And then there's like, oh, they're not, they're actually taking things out of context or whatever, or they're um, not preaching the gospel, I guess. So. Um, yeah, I That's guess. Very true. I, I mean, think, yeah. If somebody who doesn't know us here listens to our YouTube, uh, yeah, they may think we're off the rockers. Yeah, they may think what a load of guys here yeah, because they may hear things that we say that are out of context. They may certainly hear, and I, I've said to you guys, even when I speak, I, I'm sure I can't speak for ten minutes without saying something that can be totally misconstrued or misinterpreted or taken out of context yeah, yeah and, and this is all, all of a sudden this Charles Cole preaches that <laughs> Jesus is the this 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 and this and then, whoa I never said that oh yes you did here's the clip oh, that's not what I meant <laughs> yeah you know it's so easy same with you guys by the way you're all on on, yeah. on, on there as well because you've all said one thing <laughs> or the other somebody's gonna pick on that and say yeah I think that's a really a really good point because sometimes we just pick on something and, and it's maybe just the way they said it or they were just a bit clumsy with the use of words or yeah. it just didn't come out in the right way um, okay. I think something someone once said I can't remember who it was but um, I think it was when I was at Bethel and they were talking about um, they often get like lots of different people in to speak but not they don't necessarily not that they disagree but they're, they're, they're like, not, kind of different yeah. viewpoints mm -hmm, different mm -hmm. you know spectrum and then um, and they kind of were like we want you to be thinkers we want you to think we want you to choose to like listen to holy spirit and let him guide you and not that they're completely off the spectrum but just that it's slightly different viewpoints or whatever um and uh oh yeah and they were saying you know you um chew off the meat and spit out the bones um and that's kind of like our job as christians is not to just be spoon fed all the time but like to you know, when we are visiting different churches or when we are, you know, speaking to different people that have different viewpoints, it's like, oh, you actually can get some really good meat from them, like really good stuff, but there's some stuff that you're going to be like, hmm, actually, no, I don't agree with that, and that's okay. Um, sometimes there's a conversation you can have, or sometimes it's like, oh, actually, no, this doesn't need to be a conversation. I don't know, like, you know, I guess, again, it's Holy Spirit guiding you, but I think that's been really helpful for me, being like, okay, what, what good can I get from this, and what am I like, hmm. Again, depending on the level of relationship, if you've got a good relationship, you can have a conversation. But if it's just you're visiting a church, you're probably not going to go ask and get a coffee Oi, with them. Oi, pasta. Oi, pasta. Didn't like Excuse that me. message. <laughs> what did you mean? Yeah. So, again, context, mm. I guess. Mm -hmm. I That's very true. Because yeah. I think equally you don't want to throw... If, if, you, if, you, if you looked at every single thing that we listen to or we read, if you, if you, if you abandon every single thing that... You don't you don't agree with this, so you throw the whole thing out. Well, yeah. you may be narrowing down your spectrum of input very, very, very rapidly. Because as long as we're all human beings, we will all still be flawed in many different ways. <coughs> not one person is is perfect in the communicate other than Jesus. 
in their communication of the truth. Um, and so, yeah, we'll say stuff, you'll say, I'll say stuff, you say, oh, I don't quite agree with that. Um, you may say stuff, I'll think, hmm, I don't quite agree with that either. And indeed, I think conversation is the right thing to do, great. But if you're listening to a podcast, there's no point going and sending an email back and saying, I'm listening to your podcast. Uh, what did you mean? Okay, fine. If the Holy Spirit is helping you to do that, go ahead. But uh, you can't fight the whole world uh, and start trying to write everything that you see. Uh, but there is there is stuff. There is stuff out there that is really uh, some stuff. So so there's a spectrum as well. So we we have churches that we would think are really mainstream and which we generally agree with. Um, there's actually that spectrum. We probably are not there as a church. We're probably somewhere here. Uh, but there's also all of that. And, and I'll say that that whole spectrum is indeed a spectrum. It's truly a spectrum to, to, to even... So, so we've spoken in the past about some fundamentalist churches uh, in America that pick at uh, gay funerals and all these sorts of things and and... and, and a lot of hate around and all this kind of stuff which is not the Holy Spirit, it's not God at all. To be honest that's still on the spectrum, it's just on the extreme end of the spectrum. If you move away from that you will find some that are less like that so they don't go and pick it yeah. but they speak about it and they feel that. Do you know what I mean? Then you move closely and then there may be some that don't mind uh, homosexuals uh, that, or maybe they don't mind that but maybe if you um, um, uh, have an abortion, all of a sudden they have no qualms with you being killed or something like that. You know, it, there's all kinds of spectrum of things that people, and <coughs> you start moving all the way into what we would call mainstream, uh, and then you start having another kind of um, spectrum that starts to develop around uh, different aspects of the church. Wherever you look at things, there's different things. So I think. Um, it's a really good question that I, I think is worth reflecting on. I, I'm sure I've been, I've listened to things that I've thought mm. I don't quite like that. And in some instances, I don't listen to it anymore. Mm. Um, but that's if the core of it is wrong, in my view, according to the Bible. Mm. If the core and the substance and the essence is incorrect, if some of the fundamentals are incorrect, I lose patience for that kind of because then I start to think what can you really be telling me so if someone is telling you that Jesus I'll just pick an example Jesus was not born um, as a virgin for example of a virgin mother because that's not physically possible I know to switch <coughs> that kind of thing off because some of the fundamentals are missing mm -hmm. do you know what I mean so the, it's gauging what is of um, significant import significant it was of significance and then trying to identify well what are the issues that if I believe this or I don't believe that's not really going to change my life so I can just say you know what I just ignore I'll move on as, as you rightly put spit out the bones and move on and it's trying to gauge that is something a journey that we all uh, will go through because you, you, you all won't be in West Hill Community Church many of you will Fiona is not uh, be in WCC all your life. You will go to other churches. You will need to um, find other churches. I think you will struggle to find a church if you do move that is perfect. So you will never find it. So you will have to uh, assess and do what the Bible says, which is test the spirits. Mm -hmm. It's what the Bible says. It says, do not accept everything that is said. Test the spirits. Because and that, that comes to what you were saying. What's the spirit that is speaking? Is it spirit of Christ or is it some other person speaking? Or some other spirit? And I think that's probably partly what, what, where the question was going. But not the core of the question. So it's just probably touching on a few... Uh, not... not, not uh, yeah. Just issues around the edges of, of, of the question, which is these things do exist, how do we react to them, how do we sense them, and I think we all said we'd come back to the Bible. Mm. Uh, 
but an interesting point would be um, the other point about you know what people have been misled why doesn't God intervene in some kind of way and shut it down you know because I think we have freedom we're not puppets on a string so I think that's it because um, God's letting us think about it and God's letting us have the freedom to make up our mind I think God's not complicit I think if God was just telling you then where's where's faith coming in do you know what I mean so I think that's where I'm kind of like God's letting you have your own mind and he will show you but I think you need to have that first process of you knowing you faith to, you know what I mean like faith believing um what is true is true yeah I guess you could say you could stretch the argument there to say if God shuts down the churches that are not preaching the truth because of that then there's a whole range of other things he needs to start to shut down like yeah. Hinduism and Eastern religions and <coughs> Islam and yeah. other things that we don't believe uh, lead to well, to Jesus to, to God so he needs to start shutting all that down he needs to shut down atheism uh, agnosticism no left. <laughs> yes. 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 and then he's he's beginning to become a dictator of the world rather than trying mm. to take over by by force uh, which which uh, is not going to happen but I think yeah. we have free will so do the individuals who are leading the churches and the individuals leading the religious bodies they have a completely free will to preach whatever they wish I mean, some of the stuff you hear people speaking about and that they get a following, you will be amazed. You will be amazed. I remember a guy once saying, you know, if you got a flute and you went to the middle of a city center and you started blowing the flute, uh, playing the flute in some kind of way, even if it wasn't a pleasant tune, you'll get a crowd. People will be wondering what on, I mean the worse it is probably the bigger the crowd actually because <laughs> people wonder, wow, what what's going on here? But you'll get a crowd. So it doesn't take a lot to actually get a crowd. You just need to be able to do something. Mm. If you if you have a little bit of a gift to be able to uh, motivate people with words, parking the word of God, and then you throw in a little bit of Bible here and there, you'll get people to follow you. You get people to follow you and you get big church church I say in, in inverted commas you got a big church if you're really intelligent super intelligent fine thinker you can analyze you're the most logical and rational person and you can say stuff you know and really get into deep intellectual stuff throw in a bit of Bible analysis you get church if you're super eloquent you think about someone like you know Obama who was president of America right I mean, this guy could speak and, and he would have crowds just staring at him. If he wanted to start a church, he could. He just needs to put in a bit of scripture and all of a sudden you have the church of Obama or something. Yeah, it, It's true, honestly. It's true. If, if you're that eloquent and you can really put a speech together and you can put words in and you know how... Some people are really gifted at this stuff. It really doesn't take a lot to get a following. So the presence of a following does not uh, does not equate to God's presence in that place um, it may just be an entirely self led human led venture and there's many like that around the place many the, the substance is just lacking in it even though the, the the form of it sounds good I mean they talk about they'll have a Bible reading they'll make this they'll sing a few songs but the essence is not there there's stuff like that and so but then there's also others who are actually not only just empty in one sense but actually preaching incorrect uh, teaching that is misleading people that is happening today and I think the concern in the question eventually was but there are people who are following that and hence are missing the truth but that happened, we, we were reading earlier, didn't it? It, it happened in, in the Church of Galatia. 
some Jews came in and started telling the Galatians who had just believed in Jesus and were, and were by faith uh, righteous, saying, oh, you've got to obey all the Jewish laws. So it's not new. It's happened before. And Paul said, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? What has come upon you? You were running so well, and now you've got sidetracked and pulled apart by false teachers. So if it happened then, in a church that was pretty small and localized, well, you can bet it's multiplied, and it is really all over the place. It really is all over the place. That's why we've got to be we're not um, paranoid about it, but we've got to be careful because where you want to be fed by the right kind of uh, stuff uh, and finding what you listen to and what you, and by the way that that's not only churches so there's a lot of books that are full of uh, complete emptiness uh, I mean some of the things I've heard that have been told to teenagers and people that they should do and that it's fine they should do and all you, you will be shocked and these are Christian I say again in inverted commas because if you don't go back, I keep holding up my iPad, it's not the Bible. If you don't go back to the Bible... <laughs> you don't go back to the iPad. <laughs> yeah, to the iPad, exactly. <laughs> if you don't go back to the Bible, you're lost. We're lost. We're lost as a whole generation. We're lost because, you know, times move on, things move on, but the Word of God never changes. Uh, and I think my last contribution, not last contribution, but on this particular uh, thing that I'm saying is one thing I do believe, Ivan, like you said, mm -hmm. is that no matter what is being taught, if your heart is genuinely seeking God, it doesn't matter where you are, what teaching you're listening to, he will make a way for you to find him. It happened to Cornelius, who was, all he was doing was being devoted, he was fasting, he was doing all this stuff. He wasn't, he, he hadn't heard about Jesus, nothing. He was just doing fasting, praying, crying out to God, thinking all this helped him. He saw a vision. The vision didn't save him. The vision said, go and get Peter, because he can tell you how you really need to be saved. All this stuff you've been doing hasn't saved you. It won't save you. So he's been receiving what you would call incorrect teaching, right? God created a way for him to bump into it. He said, go and get Paul, sorry, Peter, and Peter will preach to you. And lo and behold, when uh, Peter went to Cornelius' house, this is one of the first times you, you see this, Peter started to preach to them. And before Peter finished, the Holy Spirit had come on them and they were speaking in tongues. That shows how ready they were to meet with Jesus because their heart was seeking him but they were not getting the right guidance so my personal view is if you are genuinely seeking him error will not be yeah. will not hold you back look at um, Mary right Mary in the garden is a carpenter she, oh not carpenter um, she thought Jesus was a what? gardener, gardener. That error didn't stop Jesus saying, Mary, Jesus. called her by name, Mary, even though she got it wrong and she was calling him a gardener, he then called her. So I, I sincerely believe that we have nothing to fear. If we're sincerely seeking God, he will extract you from the wrong place, and plug you into the right place. That's what I think anyway. I don't know what you guys think. Because the Bible says if your heart seeks it, if you seek for me with all your heart, you will find him. So you find that sometimes people who are trapped in these situations, they may have an appearance of seeking for God, but they're content with the deception for whatever reason. Now we've been like that, so I'm not judging, because I've been like that uh, before I gave my heart to Jesus. Um, you know, I was very comfortable with my own kind of uh, lifestyle and I remember telling somebody that all this stuff about meeting Jesus and all this stuff being born again and nothing until until God just uh, said you boy I'm coming for you and there's nowhere to hide 
I have to hear the question again, just because any other insights, other aspects. You, you, you've been soaking all the, soaking it all in, so I'm sure you're about to bring some deep wisdom to bear on this right. conversation. Um, so, so, if there are different churches preaching incorrect messages or translating the word wrongly, why does it continue to happen, and does God have control of this? This might be the first time someone has encountered the Christian faith and are getting fed in misinterpreted messages and directed down the wrong path. Refer reference parable of the sower, Matthew 13. I was just thinking that there was any part we haven't really answered, but I think we've talked on yeah. most of it. Because the, the thing I was going to mention when you were touching upon is that like in the Bible, like initially in the early church there was like a bunch of different churches most of them were speaking the wrong message and it yeah. needed until Paul or Peter or um, Mark or Mark and John uh, John Mark and uh, Mark was the one they had a problem with then it was Mark and Barnabas and then Paul and Silas that was it um, they needed somebody like that to come along and say like what, what's going on you're doing it wrong um saying exactly the point like well if you're tell God, God is in control but if God's going to intervene and st stop every church which doesn't on a given Sunday doesn't give like the perfect word and maybe some human gets in there and intervenes then you have the question of well if he if he doesn't allow that he shouldn't allow any other religion, religion at all, which I guess we've all spoken about. Yeah. Your wisdom superseded mine, Charles, which is why I wanted to wait and listen to you before <laughs> I spoke, because I knew Charles you, Isla, and Naomi were going to be the people. Wisdom of your mind surpasses the other. I must decrease you. Not for Jesus only. Yeah, so. It's true, God yeah. can intervene. But chooses not to in the same way and I, I think that's the point is he, if he intervened there then he would have, have to intervene not only in the wrong preaching of his word but he will also have to intervene in any other wrong thing that I choose to do stop me from doing it yeah. which totally eliminates the concept of free will which means I become a robot which yeah. means I am primed to serve God I am designed to serve God I am wired and I have no choice to do anything different that doesn't please God mm -hmm. because if my child or my wife or my relatives or my friends don't choose mm. to love me it's of no value mm -hmm. because they have no choice they haven't chosen to do anything that's just what they do yeah <coughs> it doesn't choose to it doesn't choose they don't choose me uh, they don't Not choose you we don't choose God mm. in every scenario it's of no value so he's deliberately chosen not to do that. I mean, you could even go back to the Garden of Eden, couldn't you, and say, why didn't he stop Adam and Eve? It would have been great. Yeah. Because that's the origin of the yeah. issue, right? Mm -hmm. Why didn't he just stop Adam <laughs> and Eve before they even touched? Or why did he even put that exactly. fruit in the... Don't do it. Yeah, exactly. They wouldn't have even put <laughs> it in there. If only Fiona was there, to be like, don't do it. Don't, don't do, do it. Leave it out. Don't just leave it out. <laughs> you're you're making a mistake side. here. Yeah. Go but then you if you didn't know the other side... You wouldn't know. Yeah. I think the great thing about God is like that scripture that even like the, what the locust is taking, God will restore. Mm -hmm. So even if you've gone somewhere and you've got wrong teaching or teaching that hasn't been correct, it doesn't mean that God can't intercede and that he won't come and actually put truth in there. Mm -hmm. And that everything that they've done for however many years has been yeah. like lost, that God Absolutely. can restore that. and. Um, and it doesn't mean like they're doomed or anything like that because you know you're still alive you still have time to meet him in a real way and he loves us and that's what he wants and yeah, that's very true. yeah. i must have though for like myself probably just because I brought up in a christian home and i think what we've been teaching at this church is pretty legit and that uh, uh it's the truth so like I do find it difficult to think like if I was brought up in like a totally different like context and say I was a non-Christian through like so the age I am now and then go into a church which is maybe 
more maybe more on like a cult side rather mm-hmm. than the church, but mm-hmm. maybe searching for longing, know the people there, get involved with that, get invested in that, and then me like as a, me like at me like now me and like who I actually am being like oh well you should just seek the Lord properly and then you'll eventually know the truth which I've known all along I find it which I I guess is the nature of it but for me personally myself I do find it difficult to yeah. just because like oh I've known it all along so it's easy for me to say oh just just actually see God actually go to a proper church and then you'll find out the truth that I've known <laughs> for ages church. oh come on it, I, I, do, I do find it difficult to say but like that I guess is the the answer which we've been it's the reality to. it's yeah. the reality but um, I think this is the danger is that we don't conclude because we are all like that in the first instance the Bible says all do not seek him our natural tendency is not to seek him that, that doesn't really happen naturally sometimes God starts working in your heart and you start really suddenly starting to seek him um, I do really think that um, the way God works in our hearts is such that we're never in a position because there are people who've grown up in a Christian home who still depart from the faith. So it's still possible to depart from the faith even if you grew up in a Christian home. So it's still a thing of personal choice that at some point you, Rory, have decided, even though you grew up in a Christian home, at some point in your life you've still had to decide that this is the way. Now, there is no doubt in anybody's mind that being brought up in a Christian home gives you a better chance do you know, statistically. And that's what God's will is. That's why his desire is that people grow up in, he wants us as Christians to go on and teach our children because mm. then that limits the potential that they will ever depart from him. And he wants us to propagate a generation of believers. That there's, no, there's no issue with that because somebody who's out there who never um, um, met with Jesus their path has to come through some other random event. Whereas if you were growing up in a Christian home, you start hearing the message from when you were uh, born, like even from when you were born, really. So there is an advantage, but it doesn't take away the fact that you still need to say yes at some point in your life to Jesus. Uh, or shall I say, you also have the option to say no. Um, and to say, well, I'm not really going to do that. And I think also the other point is, when people are in that church, we have no right to judge and say, oh, they're in the church because they're not seeking God. Because you don't know whether you are the one. Rather than judging them, you are the one that was their Peter to Cornelius. And instead of sharing in love the gospel, you're condemning and judging. Do you see what I mean? So it, it really is a very, um, it, it really, what it does for me, it puts me in a position where we're in no position to make a judgment on whether someone is seeking, not seeking, or whatever their true status is, to be honest. Because we found out even in a church that we would not call a church you go in there, you could even find people who truly believe in Jesus. They're not, but they may not be being fed the right kind of food and hence be struggling a little bit because they're not being fed. And that, but they're believers of Jesus and, and, and they're just as saved as you and I. So we can never really make I, 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 I get what you're saying. And I think we have all that kind of uh, sense in our, in, our, in our mind, but we've got to be really careful that we don't um, in any way judge people because they're in that church or they're in this church, or because they're no worse off than anybody else who doesn't believe in Jesus if they don't believe in Jesus. You know, I always say, it doesn't make a difference whether you're in a church, and, well it does, whether you're in a church and you don't believe, or you're not in church and you don't believe. At the end, it doesn't make a difference. The only difference it makes is that by going to church, you at least are exposing yourself mm. 
to the probability of encountering Jesus on any, <coughs> any one moment on a Sunday, for example. But sometimes it also works the other way because you, the more you ignore and don't listen, the more immune you become to the Word of God. And, and so, yeah. I've got another analogies thing to my head. You're the man of analogies, <laughs> yeah. uh, Darren. So you could have like four people with every the same pieces of Lego and you get told make your representation of Jesus or God with this bits of Lego. They might all be the same. No, they might all be different, but they've used like, all the same bits mm -hmm. to make that. So it's maybe cut from that is that it can all the right bits are there, but they're maybe used in different ways mm -hmm. and at different times, and they all are for the right reason, but they're just being mm -hmm. used in different ways. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, are the are the four people like? What are like each of them? Are they like? It could be four. Like us. churches or people. People. Okay. Yeah. People. Okay. So and, but you could, it could it could just be like make a car, and it's your own representation of what that will look like. But you're all using the same things given to you. Mm. As in Jesus can look different for different people. Is that yeah. your? Yeah. But using all the same things, and they're not using things from their pocket to make a difference are. Yeah. And there's different or there's like different routes to the one place. Yeah. It just depends what way you go in. But they're all going to the same end. That's true. Yeah. I mean uh, I think we don't all see Jesus Jesus is so <coughs> broad and wide and full that we don't all see him exactly the same way do you know what I mean it, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean he's changed it's it's a bit like the sun yeah you know you see if you look at the earth and the sun we're all looking at the sun or maybe the sun is a bad example maybe the moon is probably a better example you know you're on the earth and you're all looking at the moon in 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 Australia or in Asia or in Africa or in America you can all see the moon it is the moon, but you're seeing a different side of the moon, and what's more, you're seeing a different shape. Well, not the moon is the same shape, but you, you're seeing uh, either a crescent or you're seeing something different, but it's still the moon. Um, and I think what, what that is, is because Jesus is, he reveals himself to us specifically, individually. And I think Rory made a very good point because churches are actually like individuals. So if you go to a church, it has a, I won't say personality, but it has a, I'll use culture, it's probably the better thing. The yeah. culture of a church reflects the encounter that that church has had with Jesus. Mm -hmm. do, do, do you know what I mean? And, and so you can see a church that does a lot of healing stuff. And, and people are getting healed all the time, healed all the time, healed all the time. Why? Because Jesus has revealed himself. They've pursued and they've found Jesus as a healer. And this is happening all the time, all the time. Another church, it may be something else. Uh, another uh, particular, maybe it has been uh, deliverance or it has been some sort of freedom, being able to live in freedom that has been revealed to them really heavily in that church. And all of a sudden you have in that church um, a particular uh, uh, theme that is dominant as well. So that happens as well. You can have different churches. But I, I think, in essence, the question, to be really honest, is talking about people who are not just building of the right components, but are building of the wrong components, mm. I guess, because it's speaking about error. And when you get into error, error is, is, a, is, a, is a particularly uh, uh, troublesome thing because you know, you see some people and you wonder, how do you get into that? Um, and I don't know. I, I really don't know how you can get into that level of error. Because you've seen people, seen people who are known and who have believed to, 
who have uh, understood them a little bit, but then I see them start saying things and I wonder, whoa, where did I, how did that person get from here to there? Mm -hmm. And that's why I think we've just got to uh, focus back on Jesus. That's all we can do is focus on Jesus, focus on his word, seek him. And as long as we're seeking him, then we don't expose ourselves to that kind of error. Um, but again, I would encourage us, the more you read the New Testament, the more you find out that this is a very relevant question because it's not new. Paul was writing to Timothy. He said, the time is coming when people will gather teachers to themselves to suit themselves. So people don't really want to hear the truth. Not people, but some people don't want to hear the truth. They prefer to just gather, uh, listen to teachers and things that tell them the right kind of, the things they want to hear all the time. That makes them feel good. Makes them feel good all the time. Makes me feel, yeah, pat on the back. Yeah, 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 I'm great. I'm this, I'm that. We're making, we're making progress. No, no challenge. Uh, remember the, uh, what was that uh, YouTube thing you, you, you did? About the melon and the sharpening thing. What was that? You thing? can't sharpen a knife, a knife with a melon. Indeed, we spoke once, I remember, about iron sharpening iron, and we were talking about ourselves challenging one another. That if we get into a really cozy relationship where there's never any challenge, we will not grow. Yeah. Um, but you can't have only challenge. You have to have support and challenge. The two have to go. So you can't have challenge without love you can't have, otherwise it becomes harsh it becomes very heavy and it becomes unbearable yeah you've got to have the right amount of challenge but you've got to have love everything has to be done in love and through that love comes support and comes comfort but you can't have all support comfort uh, love and everything else and you you miss out challenge because then you you, you get very cozy and when you get cozy you get flabby and you get flabby you get worse and then 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 you're not really growing you've got to keep yourself yes. sharp I think is I mean God and Jesus they have so many so many names because they Absolutely. they are worthy of so many names yeah. because of all the things they do but maybe that's part when if you use a person or as a church become too preoccupied with one one facet of yeah, the moon or exactly. like I've heard it like looking at Jesus like looking at a diamond about all the yeah, different that slides and that because I, I was just thinking there if you like focus on God and Jesus being love but have it as more like a general like Beatles-y love is all you need kind of mm. open sort of open ended thing where it's just like it's all about love then that can be sure. like that can open like a whole bunch of things which aren't necessarily biblical or if That's you have a different interpretation of um God or Jesus which means you emphasize one characteristic like Jesus is like the hope and like you always have hope but that means it's like a passive hope which doesn't lead to like action it's like it doesn't matter about the bad things because I always have hope mm -hmm. and hope is and another bad thing happens or something's happening in your community and instead of acting upon it you're like it's okay we can still hope in <laughs> Jesus amen um, and if you become too, too preoccupied on that focus, that's then that's where is it like a dilution and mm. that generalization, which in itself you, you've you've narrowed God and Jesus, you pigeonholed them yeah. and narrowed like generalized in that area. So it's kind of like you funnel down only one path out of a gazillion, yeah. and then you've opened that up into a space which isn't necessarily meant that's very good, yeah. and explained like in the Bible. Um, so I guess that that links into the question of like churches and when they are coming out for places looking at the truth, like God is love. Um, Jesus was sent because of love, um, but focusing purely on that can lead to a bit of a distortion. Even, even though that is entirely even though true. that is totally true. Exactly. Mm. Because what, what, when Paul says that that we may grow up into Jesus in all things in Ephesians chapter 4 or 5 it says that we may grow up into Christ in all things he's talking about an increasing revelation of that diamond because even to be honest a diamond is nothing compared to Jesus but still a good analogy because we can relate to that you you just see different angles it just needs to turn really slowly and it's just ever so different every time you see it yeah and it, 
Jesus is even more multifaceted than even a diamond could ever be. Yeah, there's so much to him. Uh, and it's growing into all of him. Yeah, because you're right, you can't just go, oh, Jesus, because Jesus is the judge, right? Jesus, well, he doesn't come to condemn anybody, but it is in him that judgment comes. Oh, not judgment come. Judgment is there already, but because of Jesus, we who believe in him are extracted from judgment. Now, that's a reality, that there is judgment. Some places will focus on that. It becomes a very heavy kind of message that is not complemented by the true picture of the God of love. Some will go on to the love side, in which case, to even mention that there's a judgment, you you never never mention that because God is love. You know, which I think is the point you're touching on, and you can go okay. into so many areas of things. But whereas what it is is getting Jesus as a whole. I want all of who he is, because it's much more than we can ask to think or even imagine. I think that's a fair point right there. Do you think like when Jesus was on earth? As in, in the flesh. Is that the right way to mm-hmm. say it? Yeah. I think so. um, we know what you mean. As, yeah. in, as in, in the flesh. <laughs> um, in the flesh. Like, obviously, he was, you know, wandering around and sure. doing his stuff. And, like, and he. Um, is it held together by string? I think it, it's a, like, it feels like more, like, durable. I don't know, it just, it just unwinds. Oh! Oh! String. <laughs> I think that's good. <laughs> I think it's for the adhesion. Adhesion. Yeah. We are talking about the fidget spinner. The fidget the spinner. <laughs> 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 the, uh, <laughs> homemade fidget <laughs> spinner. Jared. Oh no! It's a no, one. Jared. It's a one. It's the other one. The, it's a one the second <laughs> leg has gone. There is only one remaining. <laughs> Naomi, take it away. Um, Sorry, Naomi. No, that's really okay. Derailed the question. It's, it's totally fine. Um. Yeah, so when Jesus was on earth in the flesh, um, he was like obviously going to different places and what have you, and he was encountering the Pharisees who were talking about God in a way that well, mm. was false teaching, I guess. Mm. So he was he was facing, sorry, I'm just thinking this as I think, I'm saying mm. this as I think, but like obviously he was facing that kind of situation, but he wasn't worried and he didn't feel the need to kind of run into every situation and correct That's them. That's true, yeah. But, I don't know. It was obviously open to questions and stuff. Like and he that. never, sh- he didn't shut it down. Yeah. He, he didn't. He, he never asked that the whole synagogue scenario would be shut down and everything. He never spoke about that. He challenged the truth. Yeah. When he went to the synagogue, he spoke the truth. Yeah. And challenged <laughs> the people, but he never sort of prayed, Father, shut down this whole yeah. institution or whatever, even though... I mean, he said the temple would be destroyed. destroyed. I don't know. Does that and maybe built it up again in three days? Yeah. But I mean, it's not the same as it was before. True. True. Mm-hmm. But, again, but again, the whole Jewish religion yeah. has remained as yeah. intact as, with a totally different story to, to Jesus' story, by the way. Um, <laughs> which just believes that Jesus was not the Messiah and Jesus was not they, they acknowledged that this guy Jesus came yeah. but he just was not the one so the, the, the Judaism has prospered well not prospered, it's not grown but it was never intended as a growing religion in that sense, it was always very localised in as the people of Israel it's, th- it's thrived, ongoing, still very strong yeah. uh, God could have shut it all down because it's a distraction to his purpose, yeah. but then that's the same conversation we were saying about Hinduism or yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, atheism true. or agnostics or whatever. If you shut it all down, you could shut anything down. <coughs> you could stop me from yelling at somebody tomorrow. You could say, "Well, Charles, I'm gonna." <laughs> right, that's it, Charles. Stop that. Yeah, super glue on my on my stop that lips now. or something. Just stopping uh, anything yeah. negative or whatever. But you know, then it loses the whole thing so I think Jesus was a good example he challenged it yeah. but he, 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 he so so I'll tell you personally right mm. I don't think we can shut down false teaching I don't think we can shut down again entirely personal view I may be wrong and many people will disagree with me 
So the entrance of certain um, things into government, like for example, gay marriage, uh, being uh, going in, into the government and, and into the into law and so on and so forth. I don't think it can be really stopped. I don't think so. Even America, that would love that it doesn't stop, it will continue to propagate in America and it will continue to propagate around because that's the way of the world. What we don't agree with necessarily will continue to happen. Do you know what I mean? It, it will always continue to happen. Uh, but the challenge to us, as it did happen in Jesus' time, so Jesus was faced with, um, with, with challenges in that kind of way. Um, I think the, the challenge is, do we just stand for what Jesus is in the midst of a changing nation? So I, I don't really personally believe I should go and picket and say anti-gay marriage and all this. It's not my business. It is, it, well, to a degree, I have to pray, pray for the government. But whether the government <coughs> legislates on this or not, really doesn't really make any difference to, to, to the way it's going. If it doesn't legislate on that, it will legislate on something else. Mm -hmm. That's the way governments act. Governments are secular increasingly. You don't have sort of this sort of church state type thing anymore. And, and there's, a purpose, there's a reason that that's not happening because it becomes all institutionalized. I mean, the whole Roman thing. Look at where uh, the, the sort of Roman institutionalized church state thing went yeah it, it, it didn't particularly go well and I don't, I don't think god is particularly into that but i think god will want us as christians to just stand up for what we truly believe in our sphere of influence and press into society and community and speak against what's wrong um, you know it could be even very controversial and say is there anything particularly wrong with the government legislating for gay marriage Do you know? I mean, I'll ask you this. I mean, I mean, their like I, their remit is like for like the people exactly, of the UK. And exactly, exactly. So, I, I I really don't think for me I couldn't say oh this is wrong. I can't say that. I can't. Do you know what I mean? Because they're serving a group of people of which there's a certain percentage that are um, that are gay and want to get married. A certain percentage that are this, that are that, that are the others. The government has to cater for that. It's the government. Yeah. It's not the church. Yeah, it's a different system. It's a totally yeah. different system. So I can pray and say, ask God, but it's it's happened. It's happened here, it's happened in Denmark, it's happened here. So if God wanted to stop it, he could have stopped it. But there, there isn't a, I don't think, they, they, that's fine, it's okay. It, it's not, you, you know what, I, what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it's, it's not something for us to legislate against. And I don't think we can continually uh, challenge the way the government um, uh, takes things um, because this towards the end of the age when Jesus comes things will become increasingly more turbulent because things will become increasingly different to what we would perceive it to be the, and our challenge is to stand uh, stand um, uh, up uh, of our faith in Jesus, I think. So, I mean, I may have controversial views, but I, I say them from time to time. As far as the government is concerned, I, like the, I think the government should do this, that. They should do right. They should do the right thing. They should um, reach out to people. They should serve people and all of this kind of stuff. But uh, I, don't think, I don't think we can impose what the church believes necessarily on a government. But it, this is entirely me. The Bible says we should pray for the government. Indeed, we should. And, and as we pray for the government, God gives them wisdom to act in the right way. But I can't sit and impose. It, it, for me, imposing on the government, think about this. For me, imposing on the government a particular thing that I believe, and say you should do this, it's the same as me doing at work, for example. People who report to me suddenly saying, okay, so all you guys, I need you to do this, 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 this. I need you to pray in the morning before you come in. Do you, 
Do you know what I mean? It, it, I can't do that. Wait, is that not what you do already? <laughs> <laughs> Someone didn't pray. Yeah, exactly. This meeting is not going not well. Going Someone meeting. didn't you're, pray. You're not the right guy. <laughs> <laughs> Someone didn't pray. Yeah, someone didn't That's pray. That's what you discussed at your lunchtime Bible meetings as well. Do I need to get Luke 11 and show you yeah, the I Lord's think. Prayer? <laughs> <laughs> but it, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Do you understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I can't, it's not my remit to... To, to force anything on anybody. I mean, we've totally veered off course, but... Uh, one more question. <laughs> I think it's late. Do you want a fun one to end? Is it an easy one? Is Wait, it so, okay, maybe a thing we should be, we should try and give, like, as best as we can, like a one sentence or a couple of sentence, like, direct summary of the question at the end. That's a very oh, good that's idea. that's a good idea. So who wants to summarize, then? Do you want us? Why don't you some of oh. man of wisdom? <laughs> like, can you get the question one more time? That's the thing about like volunteering an idea. You end up doing it. Yeah. yeah. If there are different churches teaching incorrect messages or translating the word wrongly, why does it continue to happen? And does God have control of this? I mean, anyone just shake their head if I'm saying something that's heretical or wrong. <laughs> we will. Okay. We will. Cool. Uh, because well, we believe that um, God didn't make us like robots. He gave us choice. He gave us the ability to uh, understand the Bible. Um, and that if... I'm not doing a very good job. I'm, You're doing a great job. Okay, sure. Um, that if um, we're, we're, we're saying that um, God should shut down all these churches, then it's kind of like a slippery slope of saying, well, if God is going to stop all churches with dodgy teaching, he should stop Judaism, he should stop Islam, he should stop all these other religions which don't adhere to what we believe. But that's the thing, we have choice. Yeah. We have the choice to choose, and we believe that if we are truly seeking what God wants, truly seeking Jesus, that he will totally facilitate that he won't get in the way he will lead us to where he is lead us to the truth if we have that willing heart and you're never too far gone you can always come back to the bright diamond that is jesus because he's multifaceted like a diamond amen amen Amen. Amen. (laughs) as long as you desire god